Hello there everyone, this is I am Mark III and welcome back to Ashes of the Empire campaign as my lone defender scurries away across the desert and leaves me far far behind and that's quite deliberate because I'm nowhere near it so yeah that's just how it is I have given the tank its deployment orders so off it goes Though for some reason it's still called a half-built tank, yeah. I'm not sure why. Let's go ahead and get that fixed. Yeah, it's just the fleet hadn't updated. Um, it is now officially called the Scarab. Though, to be honest, there weren't exactly many options as far as the naming of it was concerned. The other one was the Scarab, but that breaks with the entire insectoid kind theme that we've got going on with our existing vehicles to this point. So this is the Scarab, MBT, main battle tank, of course. Though it's, I've also called it the prototype, because I like this hull. It's a really nice hull, but I'm not 100% sold on the main cannons just yet. So I'm going to have to wait and see how this thing actually performs in a fight using its main cannons, and then just see how it goes. But yeah. no doubt at some point I'm going to be making some variants based on this hull with a better refined turret or with different weapon systems, depending on how it goes. So yeah. I thought I teleported away from you. Obviously I did not. Yes. Yeah. Wait, why are these out yeah. of play? Play. That is my base, is it not? Oh. I was selecting the fleet, not the unit. Okay, that's why. Never mind. Anyway, my progress is doing okay. I've not advanced since last time, except for naming the entire thing. I'm just yeah. going to pull that out now. So, yep. Yeah, off he goes. Trundling along at a yeah. whopping 22. And my next order of business is going to have to be getting some more of those suckers out on the field, because... Well, I could try and build some more yeah. tanks and things. I can't really afford another Scarab. Not as things stand. I've got like half a Scarab's worth of resources. But I don't trust a single Scarab to actually hold back the forces of whatever decides to go after me first. Probably the White Flayers, but, you know, might be someone else as well. All depends on who gets going first. So, yeah. I'm going to be pulling out and skipping time and trying to gather some more resources. Though there are actually a few other things I could be doing now that I think about it. Hmm. Yeah, I'll find something else to do. I'm not happy with my information gathering as it is. And here we go. One little addition to our fledgling empire. I didn't actually bother to record anything while making this because it's not truly a vehicle per se and it is not complex in any stretch of the imagination so there was really nothing to show everything that you need to see about this thing i can walk you through like right now so that's fine this is a support vehicle effectively but it has no ai no control no nothing like that because it's not meant to actually fight or do anything it's, it's supposed to just sit there and look pretty I think that's the best way to put it. So let's switch camera and give you a quick look around it. As you can see, the main centerpiece is just a strategic antenna. The point of this vehicle is to gather information. And so for that reason, it is actually just four legs, which I've curved to make it look a little bit, be little bit better. Rubber blocks on the end in case it ever has to, has to touch down for whatever reason. And on the top, it's just this cross bracing of wood and that's all there is to it really with a, another central column in the middle all this thing does is you go into its mode get the ACB hidden in the middle set up that triggers the balloon deployers and I want you to activate every 10 seconds or something like that just to make sure that if it gets damaged and respawns it'll do that and then this is what it does. Off it goes. <laughs> Flying away into the sky. So I'm just going to quickly save this vehicle as... Oh, I, can I can delete that. Delete that, yep. As... Floating radar. But, 
you guys get to name this one, just like every other vehicle I've built so far. So, by all means, give me a name for this one. I'm not entirely sure what name would fit it, to be honest. Because it, it just floats around and sees things, and that's all it does. So I'm just going to save that. And there we go. And that's going to give us much better information coverage than that at radar on my main base will, I think. Let's get out the build menu and... Bye-bye! <laughs> Just float away and be free. Now, what are you doing by... Yeah, uh, that alone is actually showing a 55? Wow! Okay. 36 and there's a... Something over there. A base, it looks like. <laughs> But yeah, th this floating radar is revealing a great deal of information already, and it's actually a very small one. I mean, it's it's only cost just over a thousand materials to make it, so, you know, really simple, really easy to do. That's why I didn't bother recording it. Huh. Oh yeah, I, I almost forgot. The worker is coming back without any resources from this load because... I also set up the uh, Scarab, which is still called Half-Built Tank for whatever reason. I set up the Scarab with its resource priorities, and those are, it'll maximize its ammo and fuel, so it'll pull those from anything nearby that's willing to give it, but it'll also maintain half its resource storage, so that if one of its resource containers gets blown up, all of its resources will still be retained in the other container. And it shouldn't really lose much, if any at all, unless it's picked up some excess from somewhere. Which it shouldn't really, but you know. At the moment, it's just trying to build up its material. 3,900? What? I forget, how much does this thing have? Oh, wait, yes. I added into those metal containers in the middle of the vehicle as well. That is too much. Yeah, that is too much. I don't want it to have that much resources. So, I'm going to have to do a quick modification to the Scarab. A little bit of open heart surgery, if you will. Let's teleport over here. Set its resource storage to zero. So, it'll dump itself out. Thank you. And now, we need to get into this thing and do a quick bit of modification. Yep, a bit bumpy when it spawned in, but it's okay. Now then. The modification I need to do. These. I don't want these here. So, I'm going to tear them out with metal blocks in their place. Same with these ones here. And that should drop it down to a very small amount of resources. Actually, that's less than I wanted. Uh, where's the forward resource pockets? Here. Wait a second, was that the sum total of the resources? <laughs> yes, it was. My bad, I want to get some of those back now. Ah, oh, I swear. Let's see, 2,000 resources, yes, that seems reasonable. So I'm going to give you that. Yeah, you can hold up to 2,000 resources, I'd say. So I'll put them there. Okay, that should be fine. So how much can you store? 2,000. Spot on. That's what I want. Then I can just very quickly go ahead and try and get your little speed up. To tell you how fast you can go. This is bumpy terrain, so it's not great for speed testing. But it should do okay. Yeah, that's reasonable. Okay. That's fine. Save this. Save the updated version. Yes. Done. Problem fixed. Now I can get back out and respawn. Yeah. Sorry, despawn it all. So, yeah. But you are still to take half your materials. Actually, I better come back in and save it again now that it's done that, just to get it. Get the settings saved as well. There we go. Done. Enough messing around. I'm sorry, I do mess around sometimes, don't I? I want to teleport to 
that thing. Teleport, thank you. Okay, all done and dusted. It's time to accelerate the game. That thing is still rising. No, actually, it's this altitude limit now. So pull all out of play and let's continue. Moving out. Truly, this is a fine day because my southern extractor now has not one, but two tanks standing guard beside it. This should be quite helpful, I think. But now I need to think of something else to do. Hmm. Well, obviously, more things that go bang, more tanks. But there is something that I do need to do, actually, that I need to think of. And wow, I am butchering sentences left and right today, aren't I? There is something I need to do, actually, and that is back at my foothold base. Because, quite frankly, I got wiped out very, very recently as you guys saw. And so that is something that I need yeah. to do something about. Let's play this out of play forces. What I need to do is an upgrade program for my actual fort. And I wish the land would spawn in properly. That would be quite nice. What I need to do is actually upgrade my fort with some weaponry and hitting the right keys sometimes would be nice as well actually. Thank you, right. Having the hood up would also be a good idea. Now, I need to do something to harden this base and make it more resistant to an attack when it comes in. But the question is, how big is it? 19,000 volume. Darn it. 19,000, that means it's practically maximum, so I can't build it very much bigger than this. I've got to keep it relatively the same size as far as it goes, so... This is going to be fun. The first step to reinforcing this place, I decided, is to move all of the explosive materials from the outside of the base. Because, you know, there's nothing to stop them from being hit and going bang. Or anything like that. And I've also done the same with resource storage as well. Resource storage has been pulled out as well. And the refinery which was sitting on top of this base has also been pulled off. And I tore out the bar that was in the lower section. And I've used that to replace all of my storage fuel, sorry, uh, ammo storage, resource storage, and the refinery. So that's all now down there in the centre of the base and slightly better protected. I'm not using these spawners at all really, so I'm going to scrap those next. Fine and dandy. I rather like the tower, so I want to hang on to that. But with the addition of that new support vehicle, this radar is actually superfluous and I don't require it. So I'm just going to flat out scrap it like that. Bye bye, radar. <laughs> so yeah, this base is looking a bit more compact already. Next step is going to have to be structural reinforcement. So I'm thinking metal armour is probably a good way to go about this. The total volume has reduced slightly, so I'm going to use that as a chance to layer on metal armour around the outside of this base to try and get it to be a bit more durable. So, yeah. Let's do it like this. Do I want to keep windows? Windows are a bit of a weak point. Mm. Yeah, that's a, that is a thing to mention, actually. Windows are generally a weak point in any given design, so keeping them not always the best of ideas. Do you want this solid metal? Sure, let's go for solid metal. Let's do it that. Let's do it that way. I'm going to put a shell around this entire thing. Okay, it seems my plan to put a solid shell around this entire thing is not going to work. <laughs> because I didn't quite understand how the volume worked. I was starting to think that maybe the volume limit in this campaign was like... Um, this is the entire space this vehicle encompasses. Like, um, 
I've got this big hollow box and it could still be really, really, really large and it would still be 2,000. But no, actually, that's not how it works. These windows are vital. And the reason is that the volume calculation comes from the actual volume used by the blocks. I was not actually aware of this, so as I was adding more and more blocks around the outside of the structure, it was actually adding to the total volume of the structure, and that is the thing to avoid. Because each beam, 4 meters cubed, 4 volume. And that is what made the volume skyrocket. I got I got barely a third of the way around before suddenly it was um, saying, nope, you can't do that because you have run out of volume. You're, you're a moron. And I accept the criticism because I am a moron sometimes. But that also leaves me with reinforcing the structure as it stands. As my preferred method to make it um, a bit more survivable, give it a bit more longevity really. Well, fingers crossed a bit more longevity anyway. What is that? So yeah, total, vo total block count, not a factor. Size of blocks is a factor. Wait, does that mean that um, beams and things? Hmm, this I must check, actually. Let's have a quick look. Right. Total volume right now, 1793. 1797. Okay, delete that. Now, give me a downslope. 1795. Okay. So you can increase the overall size of the craft if you use the less voluminous blocks, like those that are sloped or half blocks or things like that. That will give you a slightly larger vehicle or building, though, it will also reduce how durable that thing is so there's a definite trade-off going on there and it's something that will have to be kept in mind as I keep going forward sloped things good things I think that's the main gist of it isn't it yeah sloped things good things okay this building is now a patchwork of metal and wooden reinforcement and I was going to coat the entire thing but I think I like it more with this patchwork kind of style. Though of note I have also found that situated in the top here is where the AI core is for this building so and there's a little gap above it where there was actually nothing there so I just tucked in a local weapon controller and now I've got a little turret mount on top which I'm just going to well, I'm not going to do anything super elaborate here. I'm just going to whack on a missile launcher. Yeah, whack on a missile launcher. That seems reasonable. Let's give it um, a couple of launch pads. Make, let's make it lopsided just for the heck of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is going to probably go and drive a few people spare, but you know. This thing just has a random six tube missile launch sitting on top of it now. <laughs> I like the sound of that. I'll just get this, this thing beefed up and then I'll call it a day for the video because uh, time is running out a bit and I am definitely flaking now. Also, Halloween at my store went quite well. It was very quiet, but I was the last guy in my store. He was actually dressed up for Halloween, so that was like, um, everyone else was just running around in their regular uniforms and things, and I was like, uh, hey, look at me, I'm all dressed up and, ah, yeah. <laughs> well, the bright side, some people wanted to take a picture with me, so hooray for that. Oops, I've got mirror mode on still. I always do that some sooner or later. And there we go. Uh, this is not what I was thinking of when I started whacking this up together, which is um, have an offside, sorry, um, an off center launcher, asymmetrical, just missile launch on one side. Is that just bounce it out? So it's got 12 missiles now. They're pretty simple. Length five, treble fragmentation, treble fin, single fuel tank, 
one turn. Variable thruster, which actually runs up to 1,300, making them a bit on the fast side, but with a slow ramp time to try and preserve what little fuel they've got. So these things, basically, they can't go after anything at any kind of distance, but if they hit when they do, they're going to catch most agile flyers and vehicles, and they're going to pack enough of a punch to do some serious damage. So that is their general purpose. Let's actually very quickly set some limits into the local weapon controller. As soon as I get the right building mode on, that would be quite helpful. The weapon controller. Okay, let's say your maximum range is a thousand, because anything getting that close is probably going to charge way inside that pretty darn quick. So yep, very short range. Uh, maximum speed to engage, none, none, none. So yeah, this will just fire a volley of 12 fast-tracking missiles at whatever tries to get too close. Hopefully enough to fend things off, because there's not much else that around to actually try and defend this place. But in the meantime, I have 7,500 resources, so let's get a third scarab under construction. I can just about afford it. As soon as this supply room gets back from down there, I will have a third tank. So, my defense force is definitely coming along. Pull you out of play and start repairing because it still flips out so badly. On my way. On my way. Yeah, go over there. So there we go. That scarab is getting built up quite nicely. 83% built. And there's been no sign of hostility yet, which I was actually expecting slash hoping would be coming along in this particular video but it can't be very long not really i know oh, yes that thing has sunk down again so play out of play and get back in the sky if you please if you guys know how to make um, a vehicle like that stay high then i would actually like to know because um i don't know how to they keep sinking back down which can be a slight annoyance, but yeah, that's just how it is, really. But my third scarab is yeah. now complete and starting to stock up. No, no, it's not. It's still 10% off. The things were misleading me because it didn't say it was damaged, but that says it's damaged quite clearly up there. Maybe I should start reading the tooltips and things. <laughs> Might help. But yeah, I've made some progress. My defense force is actually taking shape. I've got that new scout uh, balloon drifting around, and my main base is actually slightly fortified yeah. now. So I won't be as much of a pushover as I was before. Yeah, yeah there it is over there. For some reason I'm on the scarab. Not sure why. And there's a balloon just floating in the background. So yeah, that is it for this particular episode. And that's where I'm going to call it. Let's get that just there, so... Yeah, that, that, that's a good screen cap, that. Yeah. So this has been Iron Mark III. Thank you very much for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed the show. And I'll catch you some other time. See you next time. <laughs> Man, I messed up that exit quite spectacularly, as usual. Hey, that's what I do, isn't it? I mess up my outros all the time. <laughs>